This is Pulse, and it is once again time to have a look at some World of Warcraft news. In this week's episode, we mostly just look at all the new and interesting patch 4.2 updates of the past week, including the Encounter Journal, the latest Tier 12 updates, the new Cross Realm Premium Service, and much more. Let's go. This week's World of Warcraft news is going to be a lot like the previous Diablo news episode. Very much focused on one topic, and in this case, it's patch 4.2. Now sure, everything going on in patch 4.2 is in actual fact more than just one topic, but it's still all related. So is there at least something good to look at? I definitely think so. First up, for those that didn't know yet, patch 4.2 is in fact already being tested on the PTR right now, and we have the latest set of PTR patch notes to look at. These were last updated on the 13th of May. The actual official patch notes are pretty standard and, in my opinion, a little boring. There are lots of class changes, balance changes, and oh, it seems like we can dance in combat again. Yes, that's probably the biggest one. I gotta say that the content that was added in the last couple of updates, which has mostly been unofficially documented, is pretty interesting though. So that content. Well, quite a few new and pretty detailed maps have been data mined from the PTR files. Mostly of the Firelands, there are a ton of new icons to look at, it seems like we'll be gaining access to quite a few new hairstyles for all the races and both genders come the new patch. Total Biscuit does have a video up right here on YouTube covering some of these, so you can check that out. A lot of new information has been uncovered about the new legendary staff, Dragonrath, Terracosa's Rest. You can see a quick preview and video of the entire questline that you need to do for this most epic of weapons. You can see the updated stats from it, including its proc, which apparently has a chance to duplicate damage dealing spells, and much more. Well worth checking out for anyone planning on gunning for it come 4.2. Next up, we have a bunch of new screenshots and videos from the Firelands raid, a new temporary login screen that has been deployed, and this has led to some speculation. Will Blizzard be changing the login screen to better depict this new tier of raiding content? It's quite possible. Stay tuned for more, I guess. You can also read about the possible treats in store for us with World of Warcraft's 7th year anniversary. The rewards for collecting 150 pets is said to be... nuts? Yes, a new pet called Nuts. We've yet to see what it looks like, but hey, it does sound pretty cool. There are a bunch of new Firelands trinkets to look at. You can read about and see the rewards from the new faction, the Avengers of Hygel. The character select screen has been updated on the PTR, as promised, and you can now change the order of your characters. A few new PvP mounts have been uncovered, and they are looking pretty impressive indeed. Then, one pretty big discovery that many don't really want to look at at all. Thrall's dialogue from the epic quest coming in patch 4.2. Do you want to know what fate awaits the former Warchief of the Horde? Is Thrall gone for good, or is there still a chance to save him from his elemental fate? Check the video out below for all the data mined voices and all the answers to those questions. Lastly, in these smalls of sorts, you can also check out a whole bunch of models for pets, bosses, and random mobs that were also data mined recently. Yes, there's just way too much stuff. Next up in the 4.2 goodness, Blizzard recently updated the PTR with the new Encounter Journal. What is it, you ask? Well, the Encounter Journal effectively tells you three things. The loot drops, possibilities and the notable phases of all the bosses from all the instances currently in World of Warcraft. Yes, that's pretty huge and will no doubt replace Atlas loot for quite a few people currently using it. As an extra to all of this, Blizzard just add little tidbits of lore to all of the instances and bosses in the journal to give it all a little bit more flavor, as they so love to put it. For those merely interested in the new, the entire Firelands raid, 10 and 25 man, has been added to the encounter journal already. There's no official preview for this new, no doubt soon invaluable tool, but hey, I bet it's coming soon. Also, it seems like Krabby is back, but you can read more about that below. Wowhead also has all of this information built into their site already, so you can check it out without logging into the PTR. We're almost at the end of the patch 4.2 news, I promise. Blizzard have updated their previews of the tier 12 sets and below, or over at the official sites, you can have a look at the Shaman, Warlock, 
Paladin, Mage, Rogue, Death Knight, Hunter and Priest sets. They are indeed looking impressive and as an added bonus you can even see all of these in 3D or in video form over at Wowhead right now. You can also check the stats on these items along with their promised set bonuses out below. And yes, rest easy, everyone's favourite eye patch is still there. And I decided to save the best for last. Best in the sense that it'll no doubt, and I really mean this, cause the most drama we've seen about anything, like, ever. What is it you ask? Well, Blizzard has announced a premium cross-realm dungeon finder feature that will allow players from the same faction to invite real ID friends from different servers into five-man regular or heroic dungeon groups. This new feature will, apparently, be part of a premium package of WoW features that I assume will require an extra fee to use. Yes, Blizzard may well start charging extra for their already pay-to-play game. And that's what's getting a lot of people totally riled up. There's actually been a lot of rage about this already, and I'm curious to see how Blizzard responds to it all. Speculation has led many to believe that they will likely do the same with the cross-realm bind on account items too. Aww. Additionally, they say that only the person doing the inviting and creating the cross-server party will need to have access to the premium feature for the system to work. Currently, there's no release date, and the service is being described as a complex one to develop. That is indeed some crazy stuff. What do you guys think about it? How much do you think it'll cost? Do you think you'd use it if it costs extra? Have you been waiting for it? Let me know below. As we finally begin to near the end of our patch and update talk, here we have the latest sets of patch 4.1 hotfixes. The first set of notes we're taking a look at isn't really a list of hotfixes, as you'd expect. Instead, it's a fast patch, as Blizzard calls it. What makes this patch great is the fact that Blizzard has finally fixed the major issues with trying to use AoE in patch 4.1. These changes were made a couple of days ago, remember? I did miss last week's news. Anyway, next up we have the latest set of hotfixes. These are for May the 11th and they cover a variety of small changes, mostly addressing system errors and bugs. Nothing special here and nothing really stands out to me. As usual though, you can see the full lists below or over at the official community sites. The answers are in from Blizzard's latest set of Ask the Devs questions and this time around, if you missed it, was focused on professions. Some of the big answers provided revealed quite a few interesting things, like the fact that Blizzard want to add more fun items to enchanting, like those silly magical lanterns. They say they'll give it a shot at adding unique icons if you're tracking your professions and there's more than one harvestable item in the minimap. It seems like the Book of Glyph Mastery will no longer be required and discovery spells will let you discover every possible glyph. Chaos orbs will soon become unbound, and lastly, Blizzard say that they are working on archaeology dailies that will be added in a future patch. Quite a lot of interesting stuff, as there always is, and you can look at the full answers below if you're keen. The questions thread for Ask the Devs 8 is also up, this one focused on the Firelands. So get to it, ask your questions, vote up the ones you like, and stay tuned for the answers. There's a ton of stuff to look at in this week's art updates, yes, that's what happens if you skip a week's win. But hey, it's always interesting seeing these amazing creations. First up, the latest winner in Blizzard's recurring contest, the Guardian of Accounts Art Contest, has been picked. Gilg from Hamburg created an image featuring the former Earth Warden protecting your account Deathwing style. Quite impressive and a well-deserving winner if you ask me. You can see the image in full size below. Next up, the Cataclysm Art Gallery has been updated with four new pieces. Some new, some old. All of them awesome. Then Blizzard have updated their trading card game art gallery to feature 10 new pieces. Each image is taken directly from the official World of Warcraft trading card game, so be sure to give a shout out to your favorite pieces in the comments and check them all out in full size below. Blizzard have some tasty leftovers to share with us from their community comic contest. This comic was submitted by Shannon Fowler, her nickname is Amiss, and features a raid talking about their strats. It's quite funny. Lastly, in the official art updates, there was an update of five pieces to the fan art gallery, some of which are just too damn cute. You can see my favorite on your screens right now. Check these out along with the rest and enjoy. Now to the unofficial updates. Yes, they may well not be on the official site, but they are just as entertaining. Here we have a couple of sexy World of Warcraft related pictures. 
I don't think that needs any more explaining at all. You can, and probably will, check the full gallery out below. Then we have a couple from Reddit that have apparently been spending their time making various types of hearthstones. Quite cool. Lastly, we have the two latest images from the guys over at the Daily Blink. The first one titled, When One Department Hates Another. And the second is titled, What Have You Done For Me Lately? And that is, quite clearly, about the woes of mages. With that done, let's head on over to the World of Warcraft Smalls. There are quite a few smalls on the official side this week. First up, keep your friends close and your password closer. I'm pretty sure you all know what that one is. Then, the first batch of BlizzCon tickets go on sale this Saturday, don't forget. The next new player tips post is out, this one titled Rolling in the Peeps, and there's a poll titled Finders Keepers that ties in with that. The World of Warcraft community site has been updated once again, and you can see how by checking the links below. Then a whole bunch of posts related to the 2011 arena season. You can read how the realms have opened, the phases that are set to take place, finding your team, getting in and gearing up, and the community challenge. Yes, all you PvP junkies must be in heaven. Then Blizzplanet reports that Worgen and Goblin fingerprints are now supported. Cryptozoic Entertainment has announced EpicCon. The guys over at WoW Insider's two latest movie watch posts are pretty cool. First one titled Murloc, and the next Maeve, Life After the Betrayer. Then lastly from WoW Insider, you can look what their dream cost for the World of Warcraft movie is. Then right here on YouTube, you can see some Firelands Game Master mischief, courtesy of OMFG Kata. And Roarbug is giving away a 60 day game time card for WoW to the person that makes her the best intro for her YouTube channel and or videos. You can also check out PST episode 29 and the latest weekly marmot, the Casual Raiding Guild. Then if you guys missed the Activision Blizzard conference call, they did mention that World of Warcraft subscribers have declined and that Blizzard are promising quicker expansions. Next over at WoWhead, you can get ready for WoW's 7th anniversary, a guide to collecting tabards. And then lastly in the smalls, another guide from the guys over at WoWhead, this one titled Master Shapeshifters, a guide to character disguises. With that done, let's head on over to the World of Warcraft blue posts. The blues had a lot to say over the last two weeks on leveling up and race class appeal, on patch 4.2 holy paladin nerfs, on the legendary staff's usefulness, and on everything else relating to the legendary staff, on everyone being bad at PvP, on mounts from the satchel of exotic mysteries, on World of Warcraft players being heroes, on flying mounts on the ground being fixed, on patch 4.2 conquest point changes, on DPS classes and the Dungeon Finder Call to Arms, on fire damage in Firelands, on making raid mechanics more transparent, on the Horde winning more battlegrounds, and lastly, on paying for premium services. Yes, that's a good one. That is, sadly, the end of Pulse Episode 87 and the end of the World of Warcraft news. Thanks for watching, and you can, as usual, find text and audio versions of this episode linked below. Remember to like the video, favorite it, share it with your friends, and subscribe. Most importantly though, happy premium services.